to the first guy I've ever known to make the trip from Fayetteville, New York to Fayetteville, Arkansas. <laughs> yeah. The only guy I've ever known to do it. Not exactly a straight line. There is not a straight line. Underway, Syracuse with the basketball. Here's Carter Williams, who has been spectacular already all the way to the iron, but can't get it to go. Boy, he is a slithery 6-6 point guard, though. Razorbacks have had trouble shooting from beyond the three-point arc. In particular, that's been a bugaboo, but Wade, who just had the ball, number one in white, can really stick it from there. Mickelson's pass is knocked away out of play by Syracuse. It, Mickelson is going to have to be a shot threat inside that zone. That time he caught it, he was thinking pass. Before the ball ever got to his paws, he must be a shooter for Arkansas tonight. On the move, Young trying to take the baseline. Another guy who can slither in for two, but not that time. Rebound batted out high, Syracuse has it. Carter Williams nearly turned it over. Got the pass underneath, the reverse is up and good by C.J. Fair. Now first two points, shots in the box. Syracuse can really throw body blows at Arkansas around the rim with her socks. Nicholson with a low block touch, a reverse, nicely done for two. I, I just think he's a huge key for Arkansas in this game because he's 6'10", he can face up and knock down shots, and he has really good footwork. They have a nice, big, loud crowd here tonight. And this place can become deafening if they keep doing this, forcing turnovers. Bad and airborne pass to Wade. Young to penetrate into the lane. He skips and banks in two. Arkansas very aggressive in this building off of a turnover, a missed shot. They will run it right up your backside and can beat you off the bounce with quickness. Syracuse out to a 4-0 and record. They've yet to be tested. They're averaging 25 points a win so far. Nice dish down low, and oh, Christmas couldn't get the stuff. Fast break, Razorback strike on the other end, Madden with the slam. And it has gotten loud in here. And that didn't take long. Jimmy, exactly the start that Arkansas needed if they were going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Syracuse tonight. They cannot go against Syracuse's 2-3 zone for 40 minutes. They have to score in their conversion. So far, they've been good. Trish picks it up underneath, and despite the air ball, he drops it in off the miss by Trish. Boy, the muscle that Syracuse can throw at you at all five positions. Those are two really big guards that Syracuse can bang on the boards with. I talked about Hunter Mickelson's footwork the spin, the awareness to know where he is, and the long reach to get to the other side of the rim as a shot maker. And again, one bounce, bam! Long range off the back iron by Wade. On a run out now, the point guard slithering in, and a whistle and a foul. Before the block shot with 17 and a half minutes to go, Carter Williams, as he got hit, and will go to the line to shoot two. OB early in this game, this kid's taking the ball anywhere he wants to take it, and he's doing it with great efficiency. Arkansas has busted out with a quick lead, but their inability to control this kid off the dribble would be a big concern if I'm Mike Anderson. Wade with the foul. Michael Carter-Williams, 83% from the foul line. And Mike Anderson, we just had a shot of Mike there, and a longtime Arkansas assistant years ago on a team that won the 1994 National Championship at Arkansas. And he said the people here want this style of play. Absolutely. Frenetic, you know, fast paced, press you to death, force the ball to be turned over. He said that's what they're craving. Mickelson got it. Nice little fall away. You know what? He was making shots at 2.30 this afternoon, and he's making shots at 7.30 tonight. On the drive, Fair blew right by everybody. C.J. Fair for the slam. Syracuse is not messing around. We're shooting jump shots to start this game. 6'8 junior from Baltimore. Boy, these two teams going at each other underneath. Big rebound by Carter Williams to lead the break by himself. The kick out into the corner, and Trish, that one rattles out. Arkansas wants to run. Madden on the alley, of slam by B.J. Young. Wow. They have the crowd at Bud Walton revved. Trish inside, lays it up and in on a tough drive. A tremendous pace early, Jimmy. Uh, uh, Syracuse, though, scoring with ease to start this game in the half court. Arkansas getting it done in transition. Syracuse getting it done in the half court and really getting it done on one, or, one pass or less. 
Wade, tremendous shooting range, using a screen there off to Madden. It is such a big, long zone. It's a 2-3 zone that actually becomes a 4-1 zone, and I'll talk about it as this game goes on. Young missed ugly. That one clanged away, and a rebound cradled by Fair. Syracuse getting on the boards last year. Teams got 37% of their misses against Syracuse. They've done a better job so far this season. Sutherland buries a three. James Sutherland, who had made 9 of 20 beyond the arc coming into tonight, knocks down his first one. Game changes when he comes in. He could very well be the sixth man in the Big East this year. Bayheim's had a history of guys, Chris Joseph and Deion Waiter. Mickelson with an errant pass. He throws it away. It'll be Syracuse ball when we come back. But Arkansas getting the fast break going and getting this crowd on it. ESPN's exclusive presentation. He was a 40% three-point shooter. I don't think he's that good of a shooter. Teams this year have backed off and played him for the drive, and he still gets to the rim. This is a kid that can really score with both hands. He can make hard shots. He can make off-foot layups around the rim. And Syracuse better lock in because B.J. Young could put up another 20-point game. Our Wendy's Wouldn't Watch brought to you by Wendy's. He had a 29-point game against Arizona State. As a freshman, he dropped 28 on Connecticut. So you're right. He can be explosive. No one's having any trouble getting shots up tonight. 19 field goals already attempted in the game in four and a half minutes. So they are putting the pedal to the metal. On top, Sutherland, and another three, a long-range triple. He's come off and gotten two big ones. Boy, he really looks good shooting that ball on tape and in person. Watch him in pregame warm-up. He warms up with a game purpose. Played very well for Syracuse when Fab Mello was academically ineligible last year in the NCAA tournament. That pass thrown away by Arkansas. They've done that a couple of times. Last two times down. I think you've got to get to the second or third side of the floor against Jim Beheim's zone. They move their wings up high. It almost resembles a 4-1 zone because of how high they bring their wings and how long they are. And Arkansas is going to have to be very selective when to punch, when not to punch. Razorbacks pressing again. The other thing about the Bayheim zone is that it's a flexible zone. He'll move those guys around. Yeah, he, he will give you the shot that he wants you to take. And if you make three or four of them, then they'll make the adjustment. Sutherland, they're going to pay very close attention to him. Carter Williams with a teardrop short, picks off his own rebound and lays it in. I, I, for, for me, the whole key to the ball game is this kid's ability to take the ball where he wants to take it. Slithery, strong, tough, quick, great reads by number one. Now he's led Syracuse to a 10-0 run and a 17-10 lead. That has quieted the building here. Ball has got to get to that SEC label on the floor. Here's Mel off the bench and off target. He's a tremendous young shooter. Freshman out of Bartlett, Tennessee, and they really think he can be a zone buster. And they may need him tonight in a big way. Look how small that zone is up top as opposed to the size that Syracuse throws at you with their guards up top. Completely different look out of the same shape. Long one by Carter Williams. He front rimmed it, battled for the rebound. The Razorbacks have it. They're going to run at every opportunity. Wagner, nice dish inside and a foul. Stops the clock with 13.51 to go here in the first half. That foul will go against Baimu Sakita, the 6'10 junior from Senegal. That will send Bell to the line. We talked about what a good shooter he is. The all-time leading scorer at Bartlett High in Tennessee. Think about this for Mike Anderson's system, how they press and create havoc. They, they rely on three-point shooters tremendously. He did it at UAB as a head coach. He did it at Missouri. They relied on him when he was an assistant at Arkansas. So far this season, after five games, this kid at the free throw stripe leads them with only five three-point makes. That's what they're lacking right now in their arsenal. Bell, a 75% foul shooter. Five-point lead for Syracuse. Interesting, Mike Anderson backs off of his pressure after the made free throw. That's a 1-1-3. One, one, and Arkansas will trap out of it, and there's no rhyme or reason when they come with the heat. Fair, looking for his jump shot, doubled up, somehow got it up there, and drew the foul with 13.34 to go. Despite heavy pressure, Fair coming in number two on the team in rebounding. Played a lot of minutes last year for Jim Beheim. Jim was talking about before the game 
he thinks a lot of people are not focusing on college basketball how many good teams there are early on you know he's talking about Florida talking about Indiana talking about Duke and some teams not necessarily those but some being much better early than many thought I, I agree 100 percent I've already heard the, the groundswell of different folks talking about there is no dominant team there is no great team first of all who cares if there is no great team right now this is November the national title trophy is not going to say but there was no great team you start breaking down Florida and Duke and Indiana Michigan and start preparing to beat those teams you'll come out of that film room saying there are some great teams right now in college ball I guarantee you they see the drought for Arkansas turnover there and the traveling violation by Williams Fair across to break the press. Subtle and bottled up, trying to get out of the trap. Thrown away. It'll go back over to Arkansas. You absolutely cannot get careless with that basketball on the side. Arkansas will saddle you up the sideline and trap the breath out of you. And once that trap comes, you better flash that elbow on the ball side and get it out of there. But you know, about seven minutes into the game, that's the first Syracuse turnover. It is. So Arkansas coming in three and two losses to Arizona State and Wisconsin. Trying to spring a major upset here in the early going tonight in Fayetteville. Paul has got to get to the free throw line and then make a play. Clark gave up the dribble. Shot clock down to 13. On the attack, Scott Airborne draws the whistle. They go to the line for two. Cody Clark, a junior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Very high energy player. Well, so far, Arkansas has not settled for long jump shots over the length of Syracuse. They're being patient when they find a crack. They're sticking their nose right in there, playing tough. Carter Williams with the foul. Well, a win over number 18 Texas is the only thing between a Big 12 title and a trip to the Fiesta Bowl for Kansas State. 8 p.m. Eastern, catch the game on ABC Saturday night, presented by Windows 8. You know the importance of that ball game tomorrow in this part of the country? That's going to conclude the regular season. And Jeff Long, the AD at Arkansas, has said that that's when he will go to work, getting ready to hire the next head coach. Pass tipped off of Syracuse and out of play. And Anderson loves the effort. Nice jump pass inside for Clark, but he's bottled up. Outside Bell, a long one. He airmailed it. I don't know why Cody Clark would hesitate in ball fake. He's only 6'5. All he's doing, allowing the defense to swallow him up. Southern and left open straight on. Got another one. That's his third already. You have got to tag Southern. You have to be there on the catch. The guy's 6'8. He's going to get vision of the rim every time. He is automatic. He's three for three beyond the three point line. 22 13. Watch the wings down low. At times, both of them will get the free throw line extended, and it is such a high zone that takes away that corner overload pass. That zone giving them a lot of trouble. The Syracuse zone eating up Arkansas right now. Razorbacks with another sloppy turnover. <laughs> See you at work. to donate. Jim Beheim and his family have been very, very involved in this battle personally. The basketball gala with his wife Julie, which is incredibly popular and has raised so much money there in Syracuse over the years. Beheim's really active. Sutherland again, and there's another one. That's his fourth three-pointer. They has can't he, guard him right now. Has he had to dribble the ball one time into his shot? Not one time has Sutherland had enough heat on him to make him bounce the ball into a shot. Came in averaging 45% from three. Uh, Jim Beheim founded basketball at Black Tie Gala to raise money for cancer-related issues. He's raised over $4.5 million and so active in coaches versus cancer, a prostate cancer survivor as well. Tony had that one all ready to go. Here's Fair to drive in. He's denied and fouled. C.J. Fair will go to the line. Trevor Cooney lost it on the dribble. Should have been an easy two for Syracuse. Powell with the foul. Arkansas turning the ball over at a high percentage rate to start the game, and Arkansas no offensive rebounds. 
and you have to make Syracuse pay for playing that 2-3 zone. Syracuse handling the ball very effectively. They've been in possession 20 times. They've only turned it over twice. And that's good. As, as active as Arkansas is, and I think Arkansas is a team, Dave, that's really good at getting a hand on you and a hand off of you defensively. You have to play right through that contact. And Syracuse has done it well. So Wagner takes to the bench. Freshman will sit. Fair with another one coming. He hits 74%. Junior from Baltimore, Maryland. And he puts Syracuse up now comfortably, 27 to 13. And the run now for the Orange is now 20 to 3 over the last five nights. Only one time so far in the game has the ball gotten to the SEC logo on the floor. And it is a must against this zone that the ball gets there. There it is. Inside foul blocked and fouled by Sutherland. Who denied him in close, 11.07 left. They, that's the spot. That is the trigger spot against Syracuse's zone. It always has been. And there's multiple ways to get the ball to that spot. You can go baseline and come back out. Or you can start it there and go down to the rim. But, boy, Arkansas has got to start getting productivity from the sweet spot inside the zone. Marshawn Powell, a junior. He's made it back from an knee injury that Mike Anderson said put the team last year in a state of shock. Just two games into the season, he was their best player. They wound up going 18 and 14, Jimmy, but did not earn an invite to a postseason tournament. They probably would have had he been able to stay healthy all year. He's averaging a double-double the first two games. It was like a 20-point, 20, 10 rebound double-double. Trish directing traffic. Upstate New York native. Sutherland, that's certainly his range if he wants to shoot it from there again, and he does. That's There's incredible. another one. Absolutely incredible. First of all, the stroke and the confidence by Sutherland, but Arkansas's inability to make that kid bounce the ball into a shot. Five for five, 15 points. That's his season average, and another turnover by the Razorbacks. Syracuse gives a right back and a foul on the play with 10.28 to go. Here in the first half, just catching and shooting. He's 6'8". He's knocked down five three-point shots, and all of them have been just like that. Boom. He has space, and he has pace. Space to vision of the rim, and pace to shoot it in nice rhythm. Every one of these shots have been a catch, rise, and fire. Arkansas has got to make him dribble. It's that simple. Foul went on Qualls of Arkansas. The baseline is fair with a miss and tipped out of play. It'll go the other way. And be Razorback ball trailing by 15 at home. Where the effect of the whiteout has been eliminated by James Sutherland. There may not be a better sixth man in college basketball this year, not only in the Big East, but in the country. He scored as many points himself as the Razorbacks have tonight. Halfway through the first half, Madden drops the pass from Mickelson along the baseline. Powell with the rebound, stripped by Cooney. Nice job by him. To knock it free and prevent what would have been an easy layup. Syracuse averaging seven blocks a ball game. And on tape, they're really disciplined about being the second guy to leave the floor. Marshawn Powell doesn't have great explosiveness, and the guards of Syracuse, they get involved in the play. Cooney redshirted last year. Redshirt freshman jumping in young, but he gives it up. B.J. Young averaging 21 a game. He's had a quiet first half. Not a good sign for Arkansas. And I think you've got to screen the top of that zone as well. Powell, right in that spot you said they need to get shots from. That's the sweet spot. Now, I think it's interesting. Syracuse, they are a 2-3 zone. So what do you do against it? You know what I do? I go and I watch what Syracuse does against a 2-3 zone. What does Syracuse do against a 2-3 zone? They screen the top of it. They always screen the top of a 2-3 zone. They know what hurts it. Trish put the shoulder down. He drew the foul. That'll go against Rashad Madden, his first. 30 to 17, the orange, and they have the ball on the baseline. I watched Syracuse against Colgate, who was playing a 2-3 zone. They screened it, and they get their playmaker in the middle of the floor. Wade with the theft. Nice bounce pass. Well run break up and in by B.J. Young. Arkansas has to have a couple of 6-8-0 runs per half to stay in the ball game. This could be the start of one right here if Syracuse doesn't take care of the ball. Well, now they've got the crowd back in them again. Fair, traveling. 
Syracuse gives it up against the pressure of Arkansas. It can be just as extreme in the half court as the full court. You can either be ready or you can be rattled. That time Syracuse was rattled. Arkansas, for the first time tonight, scored off a turnover in their last trip down. Now trying to do it again with eight four. Young into that sweet spot and be a score. Here's Young, taken away, however, by Fair. Now they have numbers at three on two. Up top, Sutherland with the stuff, and he'll go to the line as well. Wow. What, a, what a half he's having. He is having some first half here in Fayetteville. And again, he has not been forced to bounce the ball into a shot. Syracuse, they are so good at throwing over the top of you and making that pass right there. Usually it's Michael Carter-Williams making the pass. This time it's Fair. But because they are set up in that zone, Dave O'Brien, they are always organized to flood the floor and run their lanes as well as anyone in college ball. They finally missed something, and it was a foul shot. Pretty good foul shooter, too, at 80%. 32-19. Wade here with the ball. He shot from three-point land 47.6% last year. That led the Southeastern Conference. Powell pulling his way in. Not there. It's over the top of the backboard and picked up by Sutherland. Brandon Trish, fair, all by himself in the corner. Not. Rebound tipped, and Trish got hit with 7.57 to go. So Trish will go to the line to shoot two. It has been James Sutherland's half so far. He has been terrific, and he comes in off the bench with a purpose, and his purpose is to rise and knock down shots. Well done. The weak side help, pass over the top, with you with a high percentage shot. Pretty good game, 42-39, the two football games that uh, have significance today. MAC Championship, ESPN2, Northern Illinois by four. And that Pac-12 Championship game, you can hear it on ESPN Radio, UCLA, a touchdown better than Stanford. Meanwhile, back in Fayetteville, Jim Beheim's team looking very sharp early, 32-19 on Arkansas. Brandon Trish at the line. Of course, prominent Syracuse bloodlines here. His uncle Howard Trish and his cousin Jason Hart both played for Bayheim. Under eight minutes to go, and they're going to bring a substitute in from the Syracuse side. That'll be Jeremy Grant. Talk about bloodlines. He's the son of the former NBA player Harvey Grant, nephew of Horace Grant. And this is his type game. A long athlete that can run and quick. Freshman out of Hyattsville, Maryland. Wade gives it up for Madden, and they swing it now for the point guard. And again, watch how high the back line of that zone will come. That wing was all the way out, the free throw extended. Wade got a good look. Christmas hauls in the rebound for the Orange. Syracuse picked to finish second in the preseason Big East coaches poll. On the drive, up and off the iron by Trish. The lane opened up for him. Razorbacks want to romp. Young and the foul. He'll go to the line. So B.J. Young pressing the matter. The St. Louis sophomore for a three-point play. B.J. Young understands that the free throw line on his end of the floor is a yield sign. It's not a stop sign. And I've heard that this year described that when you're bringing the ball up, that free throw line is a stop sign. It's not. It's a yield sign. What do you do at a yield sign? You read the traffic. You read the flow. And the traffic around you determines what you do at a yield sign. B.J. Young read at that time awfully well. The traffic didn't stop him. He takes it to the rim. You sound like a much kinder version of my driver's ed instructor. Never a lot of fun for him or me. Here's Young trying to beat everybody down the floor. Lays it up and another foul. Now B.J. Young trying to put Arkansas right on his back. He's back to the line. You know, he's the guy that's capable of having that 6-0-8-0 run that I talked about for Arkansas. And he's not a great defender. He seldom scores off of defense, and this time he does. And again, that, that the defender was on his hip. Advantage offense. B.J. Young to the rack. Foul on Brandon Trish. That was number one on Trish. And a three-point play. The closest that Arkansas has been in a while. Young is the man doing it with 11 points. 
is the first real test for Syracuse against the pressure, and they throw it to the third row. Tim Beheim will take a timeout because he, he knows this building can explode, and he feels an explosion getting ready to happen. We will take the break as well. Bud Walton Arena is starting to get revved up here in Fayetteville. Up next for career day, quarterback. A Corona Extra. Tonight it's the SEC Big East Challenge. Here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, Jimmy Dykes, Dave O'Brien with him. Right now the Big East leading by one in the challenge. Madden trying to force his way in. Nothing but orange shirts around him, and he'll turn it over. No timeout. He did get the timeout before the turnover. So 33-24, Arkansas takes a timeout with 6.38 to go. Syracuse ranked number six in the country right now. Arkansas unranked, trying to spring the big upset. Jimmy, take us inside the play. Well, talk the defense, and it's so critical for the, the middle guy in the zone for Syracuse. And this time it's Maimu Sakita, who is the best guy that Syracuse has this year. Watch him. He gets back. Now watch him go to work. Talking, pointing, directing traffic, steps up, becomes a wall, stays wide, doesn't reach and foul, forms another wall inside. He's talking the defense. He is feeding tremendous confidence to the four guys around him. He only plays about 15 minutes a game, but you talk to coaches in the Big East, and Syracuse's defense goes to another level when that big dude's in the middle of it. Arkansas to check it in from the baseline. Madden to put it in. Young off the screen. screen. That was a very good screen up top by Ja'Cory Williams to free up Young. Fouled by Christmas, who went for the block. And that'll send Young to the line. Young right now on the Wooden and Naismith watch lists. He was second team all SEC as a freshman. He had a 31 point game against Florida. Hey, he's only shooting 66% from the free throw stripe. And I was watching him today at the shoot around. He gets the ball at the side of his head. Before he releases, the ball gets to his right ear. See that? He's almost, not, not because he's doing that, he's, he's, he's launching the ball instead of shooting the ball. That shot elbow should be going up, and it goes back on B.J. Young's free throw. Well, he's a sophomore now. Can you make, can you coach a guy to be a better foul shooter? At absolutely. This point? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes hard to do in the season, but you can do it. Carter Williams gives it up. Long one coming from Trish. No. Rebound stolen away. Nice job by Cody Clark, who's done terrific work on the glass for them. Very high energy player. Back to that foul shot. See how the ball got right beside his right ear? At that point, the wrist has to kind of launch the ball instead of getting the ball up with nice arc. Sutherland again. He has not missed out there. He finally does. Rebound tipped and controlled by B.J. Young. Well, for Arkansas to have this thing down to five, six-point game at the half would be huge. You betcha they have the momentum now. It has swung in their favor, at least for the moment. They're now in a 6 nothing run. Arkansas has been good, Dave, when they've screened the top. There's a screen. Bell launches. That didn't touch anything, and it's out. So not what they wanted there. Antlon Bell, who was only 5 out of 18 from 3, they recruited him to come in and hit shots just like that. They're not falling early for the freshman. Sutherland attacks, teardrop, no, rebound, Trish, no, can't stuff it in. Christmas with great hustle, but he's on the line and turns it over to Arkansas. I am not messing around with somebody coming to, towards me in Bud Walton <laughs> Arena this year, because last year I got smoked. Christmas come early. <laughs> yeah, it would, it would have been Christmas come early had he come over the table. We are not messing around no, with that are. kind of action this year. That would have been right in your lap. Yeah, it was last year. Yeah. Young decides to take it. Got it. Big shot for B.J. Young to make it a five-point game. And now he's on fire. Trish collision there midcourt. Young went down, but no whistle. Well, the last four or five minutes, Arkansas has been better at keeping Williams out of the lane. Fair, tough shot. Rebound right into the hands of Coleman, and he draws the foul. Woo! You talk about one guy whipping two or three. 
Daywan Coleman just did it. I love this kid's body, 6'9", 288. New York Mr. Basketball. He's kind of a poor man's Jared Sullinger. I think that's what he's going to grow into. I think he's got a chance to be special. Well, his weight was a big part of the story as he went through high school in SU's backyard there in Jamesville, New York. He's been reported to be as high as 300 pounds. He led Jamesville DeWitt to three consecutive state titles. You heard me talk about it in Maui with Devontae Gardner from Marquette. In, in basketball as a player, you can either be getting in shape or you can be getting better as a basketball player. You cannot do both at the same time, and this kid understands it. Young needs help, bounces for Bell. Williams lets it go. Bad shot. Not a shot they needed there. Not from him. 34-28. Trish the senior, one of two seniors for Jim Beheim. Sutherland bounces on the line for Coleman. Backing in strong. It won't drop. A fight for the board. Here comes Arkansas. Young on Trish. Flows right by him. Can't connect, and it'll be Syracuse ball. Tipped out of play. Went awfully close to Coleman coming over the back of an Arkansas player. But I love the effort of Coleman to run the floor from offense to defense. When he was under the rim when Arkansas got possession of the ball, now look at him coming. That, that's a foul. That is completely over the back of an Arkansas player on that baseline. 422 to go. Here in the first half, it is tightened up. Looked like Syracuse might run away for a while. Another wing Bam. jumper and good. Count the basket, three-pointer. And there's going to be an offensive foul on the play. Sutherland drills another one. The, 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 the goal is going to count because the foul occurred while the ball was in the air. Watch the right side of the lane here. Watch the back of that lane. Yeah, it's Coleman yep. throwing the guy out. I that shot what, was already in the air. Yeah, it, it, but you know what? It was a lot closer than I originally yes, thought. Yes, it was. I thought it was clearly out of his hands when the foul occurred. And Sutherland's been amazing as he has hit six out of seven. Beyond that three-point line. Now Williams at the line. We'll give you another look at that foul. When did the foul occur? That's what you go by. The foul occurs. Oh, yeah, a terrific call by this crew because I tell you, that was a bang bang call. And the officials right on top of it to see when the foul occurred and when was the shot released. That is the key to making that call, and they did it well. Williams makes two, 37 30. Carter Williams against the pressure, they break it. Fair. Nice dish. Coleman with a dribble down, tips it up and in. Shots in the box. And Daywan Coleman continues to throw body punches at Arkansas as well they should. With that size advantage inside, that is the strength. Syracuse back on top by nine. Man jitterbugging in, stripped down a whistle. 346 left. We will take a break here with Syracuse on top 39 to 30. And when the Arkansas team went to Italy this summer on a playing tour, they found a little bit of home in Florence. We'll explain. Coming up next. Time report is right around the corner. I'm Carl Ravitz, Jay Williams, and Seth Greenberg. We'll get into the Georgetown game. They won. They scored 37. We're not at half. Syracuse has more than that already. Well, when the game barely gets to 40, you can't have 13 turnovers if you expect to win. And that's what, obviously, Tennessee did. That's why they lost. Both offenses were offensive. They were. How about this game, though? Offenses have been on fire. Good first half, still time to play there. Meantime, Oregon and Kansas State, Oregon State, I should say, and Kansas, it's just underway in the second half. They're on their way to a high scoring night. Jeff Withy, already with eight, 48 40. Now they're going with the whiteout tonight here at Bud Walton Arena in Fayetteville as they look for the upset against Syracuse. But I'll tell you what, Jimmy, they better find somebody who can find James Sutherland. He already has 20 points. Seven out of nine shooting, six for seven from three. And again, for him to continue to catch the ball without being tagged on the catch of the ball is something that Mike Anderson is going to have to talk about to his kids at halftime. But th this kid is lighting them up. Already a career high in three pointers made. Madden at the line. Tightens it up, 39 32. I, 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 I'm serious. I don't think Sutherland 
has bounced the ball one time in this game. He's made jump shots, and they threw it to him once at the rim. Well, his range has been sensational. Hitting virtually everything he has taken. Carter Williams giving it up in the corner here for Cooney. Here's Sutherland again. Off the front of the iron, tipped and controlled. Seven-point game. But look how high Sutherland is. I mean, that's the 4-1 I'm talking about right there. That shaped into a four-around one zone defense. Wade can't find any room. Wagner on the wing. Wagner's only 5'10", the freshman. Yeah, tough for him to make entry passes at that size. He's got to have some help up top with some screening action. Shot clock's down to eight now for Arkansas. Now to five. Young off the screen. Can't nail it. Another chance, though, as the rebound came right to Clark. Well, I'm not sure you'll get a better shot against that zone than Cody Clark had on that offensive rebound. Be a threat. Under three minutes and a half. Young dishes inside, back out to Young from Clark. Tough shot there, but that won't drop. Over the top. Oh, fair, hanging on the rim after the shot went off the fingertips. And what does Jim Beheim do? He just stands up, puts his hands down. Jim Beheim's guys have always played with great confidence on the road. I, I, I tell you why. It's a credit to him. Coaches have body language, too. And this guy never gets rattled. He stays calm. He picks and chooses when to get after his guys. But they are always good on the road. And I credit Jim Beheim and his body language on the sideline. A well, young, harassed underneath, couldn't finish. Great crossover here, but again, thrown away by Syracuse. Cody Clark back outside for Wagner. That's a shot. Wade, the open shooter. And the fight for the rebound, loose on the baseline. And it'll go the other way, Syracuse ball. Well, those are the shots that you have to drop against Syracuse. The ball had gone inside and kicked out to a wide open Mardrakis Wade, who led the SEC last year in three-point percentage. Arkansas bringing the pressure. Well, Michael Carter-Williams, I don't think he's come out of this game, Dave. And Arkansas has a way to get into your legs the last five minutes. Down the lane, what a pretty shot off the window for Carter-Williams. Came in averaging 10 points and nine assists per game. 148 to go and a whistle stopping the clock here and the foul will go against Sutherland. We told you about the trip that Arkansas and Mike Anderson made to Italy. They had a tremendous time visiting Florence and there they met up with Il Porcino, the pig. And how about this when they came home, they realized there's an exact replica of Il Porcino right out in front of one of the sororities here. Only things you would see in Fayetteville, Arkansas, <laughs> and Italy. And Italy, of course, in Florence. Ah, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Young at the line. Big first half for him, 16 points. For B.J. Young, the St. Louis sophomore. He and Bryce Cotton from Providence are the only two kids out of the Power Six Conference averaging at least 20 points, three and a half boards, and three assists. A well-rounded game for both those guys. Coleman needing help, gets it off to Fair. Remember I said for Arkansas to have this thing five or six points would be huge at the half. But Coleman couldn't finish on the reverse, got a great dish from Carter Williams. Young pressing the matter down the lane. He slams it in. That's a tee, they're gonna team up. And that's the right call. Hanging on the rim, B.J. Young flying down the lane. He's gonna argue his case here but they have whistled him for a technical. It's gonna be an empty argument because there's no one underneath B.J. Young right there. And that extra hold and the extra pull up is what got him. I, mean, I, I think had he, it was, he hung there for about 1,001, but then when he went ahead and pulled himself up, that extra emphatic move Got him stuck. He almost had the look of a kid caught in a cookie jar after he hung on that rim, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And Dave, that's a huge play. I mean, you've given Syracuse two points off that play, and the building was exploding. Boom. Now, if he drops right there, he's fine. But see the pull-up? That's what got him. Well, it's a major swing here with 129 to go. It stunts the momentum, and Syracuse gets the ball back. Sure. That is a huge play. How competitive can you be without losing your discipline? Always critical. 
in a tight game. That's a young team Mike Anderson has. Fair in the open floor, knocked away from him. And Syracuse will set it up in the waning seconds of the first half. An entertaining first half because this man has been on fire. Sutherland with a miss. He hasn't missed many at all. He has 22 points. Williams with the swing. Wagner One darts pass. it inside and the foul. It'll be Wade going to the line. With 103 to go. Rodriguez Wade, the junior. Dave, against Jim Beheim's zone, you want to play below and behind the zone. Below and behind the zone. And that time, Rodriguez Wade's cut was both. It was below and it was behind the zone. Fair with the foul. On the right side of your screen, boom. See that cut? It's below the top of the zone and behind the top of the zone. Well done by number one. Wade scoring has been down a little bit this season so far. He's not shooting as much as they would like him to, particularly beyond the three-point line, but he can be very dangerous. Five-point game. Cross-court Cooney. Pulls up, pops, can't drain it. Williams snags the rebound. I don't think that's a shot Jim Beheim wanted from Cooney. If you're going to try to go two for one, you want to make sure that you're getting two good shots and not one bad shot and one average shot. They've cut it to five twice here. Wagner, round the back pass. 11 on the shot clock. Young took a look at the clock now. Cooney right up in him. Face up and be a threat. Powell gives it up for Young. Got to get a shot in the air. Scoop shot. Heavy traffic, no. Yeah, I think Marshawn Powell should have been the shooter. He faced up and should have shot that basketball. Cooney open this time. Battle for the rebound. Final seconds. Six seconds before halftime. Fair had to adjust the shot, got it up in the air, and the first half will come to an end right there with Syracuse on top, 43 to 38. The crowd not happy with the technical foul that went against Arkansas, but it looked to us to be the right call. Look at these two, Sutherland and Young going toe to toe, 22 for Sutherland, exploding off the bench with six three-pointers. And we are already way ahead of where that game was before us. Think about that. We could use the break. Let's go to Ravi and the gang for the UPS halftime report. <laughs> All right, OB, take a deep breath there. 43-38, a lot better than that first game, no question about it. We'll get to the Georgetown-Tennessee game in a moment. Going on now. He gets in the game as a sophomore. He makes a small contribution. As a senior, he's been there about seven or eight years. <laughs> Look at him step into the shot. Gets behind the basketball, feet are set. If you're Arkansas, you've got to arrive on the catch and make him put it down on the floor. Again, great job of Syracuse finding him with room and rhythm on target. He steps into it, knocks down another three. James Sutherland's a guy that's paid his dues. You talk about maturity, right? He has earned this opportunity. Again, as a freshman, he barely gets in a game. As a senior, 71.3% true shooter percentage. The guy is... What a luxury for a coach to be able to bring a player like James Sutherland yeah. off the bench and the impact he can have on a game. His six threes are a career high. His yeah. points match his career high. And first off, you have to find him in transition. Secondly, when you close out, you can't come, come out and close out with your hands down. He's going to shoot the ball considering he's 6'8". Yeah, and, and B.J. Young, he's played extremely well, 19 points with the exception of the technical foul. <coughs> Nobody else has scored over four points. They only have five assists. They need to do a better job of getting in the gaps of that zone. And also, I'm glad they got out of their zone and play a little bit more man-to-man. -man. And they got in transition. Yeah, a couple of run. times, it felt like it could get away from them. But Arkansas is hanging there. 43-38, that one is at the break. We'll have much more coming up on the UPS Halftime Report. We'll look at Tennessee and Georgetown. We have to. It was also a close game as the SEC Big East Challenge continues. That's coming up when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Best Buy and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. And we've got all the latest Apple products. You can do anything with those gifts. Where does Santa... East Challenge, which is all part of Jimmy V Week for cancer research and the battle to defeat cancer in the name of Jim Balvano. We look at our tote board, which right now is 3-2. Arkansas trailing Syracuse here tonight, but the SEC is now 4-2 in the hole to the Big East, and seven wins are needed to win the challenge. Dave O'Brien alongside... Jimmy Dykes and Jimmy, I don't think you were implying in the first half 
that Donald Sutherland could have made some of these jump shots that James Sutherland made, but he was draining one after another without a dribble. And it's how he did it. I think you're right. Without a dribble is what Arkansas is concerned should be at the halftime with this kid. He's 6'8", coming into the ball game. He was the three-point threat. He had made nine of Syracuse's 17 on the year. Now he's made 15 of their 23. Six threes, no dribbles into any of those three-point shots. That's way too much space, allowing him to have great pace. Room and rhythm is what guys like and Sutherland has had room and rhythm the entire first half, and he did it coming off the bench. Again, Arkansas has got to tag this guy in the second half and make someone else beat them, because right now James Sutherland is doing it. 22 points, six out of nine from three-point territory. B.J. Young, particularly late in the first half, started to match him, 19 for him, seven out of 14. And at the foul line, Arkansas is making their free throws. As a team for the year, there's 71%. Sutherland and Young certainly have been the big scoring stories in what was a back and forth first half of basketball. First time Syracuse has ever come here to Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's just the second meeting ever between the two schools. I'm sure Jim Beheim feels like they should be up double figures. Arkansas happy to only be down five. Powell going in strong. He'll draw the foul immediately in the first eight seconds of the second half. You know, the quickness that Arkansas can put on you has bothered Syracuse at times in this ball game. And as a result, that's why Arkansas has gone to the free throw stripe now 19 times with this free throw attempt. C.J. Fair picked up his second foul, put Powell at the line. Powell two years ago lit up Kentucky for 22 points and 10 rebounds and an upset of the Wildcats. So he can lead them as well. More pressure now from the Hogs here. Carter Williams trying to get free. Trish blocking foul against Arkansas with 19.42 to go. Arkansas came in, Dave, averaging 22 fouls per game. And that's way too many. And that's been a big point of emphasis for Mike Anderson the last few days in practice. They've done a better job so far in this game. Foul number two on Wade. And the Orange will set it up. Their last season in the Big East, moving to the ACC next year. Trish lost one up. Got a good look, but it wouldn't drop for him. On a run, Powell. The spin move. And a foul. 19.25 to go. Now you can see Marshawn Powell really commanding the ball, wanting to get much more involved here in the early seconds of the second half, and he'll go to the line at 71%. Now, Obi, you mentioned Syracuse making the move to a new league, and I, I still continue to think the ACC is vulnerable. Coach K said it a couple of weeks ago. I think he has as good a pulse for that league as anyone you could listen to. Think about this. The exit fee for leaving the... Uh, the Big East, 50, 50 million dollars, mm -hmm. the exit fee. You know what the exit fee is for leaving the SEC? None. The SEC has no exit fee. Is that right? That is a strength right there and a, and a, and a strong, confident conference. And I think the ACC will be looking at. Well, count that one. Fair went strong to the iron, draws the foul. He'll go to the line. Moments ago, he picked up his third foul, but he went after that iron, fouled by Mickelson. Am I talking about Syracuse leaving the Big East? And that's, a, well, that's what Fair can do. He's a scorer, that long left paw. But it's a $50 million exit fee from the ACC. And I, and I think that tells you kind of where both leagues are. And I think the ACC is very vulnerable to losing a couple of more teams. Carter Williams, no. That clangs away. Mickelson for the rebound. You feel a window opening up now all of a sudden for Arkansas. Slick pass underneath. Mickelson draws the foul. He'll go to the line to shoot a pair. This is where Arkansas has been very effective shooting free throws so far tonight. Trish with his third foul. So the second Syracuse key man who has picked up three fouls now. Well, Kai Madden is a playmaker. He's a, he's a big guard, 6'5". Again, Arkansas has two or three guys that have been able to get inside that defense and make Syracuse foul. Mickelson with the miss. He set a school record for block shots by a freshman last year. The 6'10 sophomore blocked 72. And one game against Texas Southern, he blocked seven. 
And more pressure. Syracuse has handled it so far very well. Michael Carter-Williams doing a good job of keeping the ball in the middle third of the floor, which you must do against Arkansas in this building. 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guard with great vision. Sutherland, that yeah. one, through again, and he's back on target. You, you cannot be there too soon on James Sutherland right now in this ballgame. He has 25 points. Tipped away, controlled by Syracuse eventually. So they force the turnover. Six-point game. Here's Sutherland lofting another. That's, yes! That, 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 that is incredible. Wow! Now that time Arkansas was at least in his shot pocket a little bit. But this guy is putting on a clinic. I have not seen anyone in college ball this year so far shoot the ball as well as 43 in orange. 28 Bam. points, Jimmy. Mm. Eight out of 11 from three-point land tonight. Dr. Pepper Championship Week, Oklahoma TCU, Saturday at noon. So roll and replace action. You're going to see the roll man dive, and the replace guy is going to be the shot. Watch what happens. There's the roll, there's the replace, and the replacement is Sutherland. Bam. The roll guy attracts the defense for one second, gets the defense to bite. Sutherland comes along from behind and makes you pay. Now, the record at Syracuse University for three-pointers made is co-held by Andy Routens, who had nine against Coppin State, and Jerry McNamara, who's now an assistant coach alongside Jim Beheim, who had nine against BYU in the NCAA tournament. Stolen away, Syracuse on a run on, laid up and in by Carter Williams. Carter Williams, think about this. He gets one steal per every seven minutes and 45 seconds that he's on the floor. Best in the nation. 8-0 run that again has quieted the crowd here at Bud Walton Arena, which can be one of the noisiest places in the country. Wade bouncing for Powell. And a whistle to reach in foul with 17.39 to go. Sutherland with a bemused look on his face. That's going to be his third foul. Jim Leland, uh, Jim uh, Beheim not happy at all on this one on the sideline. Might be the only guy that can guard Sutherland as the officials. But I thought he had a pretty good trap going. Now the Razorbacks no, that picked will never off. Work. That will never work against the length of Michael Carter-Williams. And they get a quick break on the other end, and Trish lays it in. Syracuse in a little bit of foul trouble with Fair, Trish, and Sutherland all with three right now. Bump there and a foul that'll go against Arkansas here. A lot of fouls, a lot of whistles blowing here in the second half. Arkansas trying to screen the top of the zone with Powell. But that uh, screener cannot get his feet wider than his shoulders and initiate the contact, and that's exactly what Powell did. Fair. Nice move there to wriggle in for two. Every, everything's working right now for Syracuse in the half court. Sutherland has opened up a lot of plays for other people with his ability to stroke it. Now that's caused a big crowd here to sit on their hands all of a sudden. A 12 nothing run, Jimmy. What was Syracuse's biggest lead in the first half? Did, did it get to 15 in the first half? It was 15. That's, a, that's where they are again. Powell strong to his left, no. Rebound tipped. And kicked out of play by Wade. Right back over to Syracuse it goes. And for Beheim and Syracuse, a rare non-conference road game. Last 10 seasons, that's the list. The, the last 10 seasons. That's the only time they've gone on the road for a true non-conference road game. And you know what? Been pretty good at it. It's a lot of W's on that screen. <laughs> Well, Arkansas has to get shots, and they have to get the ball off the board right now. Carter Williams on the attack, no. Here's Young in the opposite direction. Williams with a long one. Air milled it. Young will lay it in, however, the right man at the right spot. A pass tipped out of play off of Syracuse. Musa Keita, the 6'10 junior from Senegal, tried to run to the other end of the floor and nearly beat everybody. Jim Beheim showing him, got to catch the ball like a wide receiver, had your hands turned wrong. 
But Jim Beheim loves the passion and the purpose and, the co and, and how coachable that kid is. Still very young as a basketball player. Young, long distance, picked off. Back out for Wagner. Cook gives it up in the lane. Tough shot blocked away by Fair. That had little chance of being successful with all those orange shirts in the lane. Here's Sutherland again. Front rim, that one. He makes one more. He ties the Syracuse record for threes made in a game. And the foul against the Orange here with 15.28 to go. We'll take a timeout as well. Here's the carousel here in Fayetteville. And here's what you get. You get the hog as well, along with the ponies. Only here in Fayetteville. Tuesday, the Jimmy V. Look at the SEC Big East Challenge scores Thursday and Friday. And right now, the Big East leading the challenge 4-2 after South Florida's victory over Georgia. Dave, I watched that Florida Marquette game last night. You know what, you can't coach basketball if you're having to coach effort. And Florida, to me, played harder than anyone else I've seen in the month of November. And their half-court offense, I tweeted about last night, as good and crisp and clean as anyone I've seen so far. Wagner drops in a three, and now you wonder, does Arkansas have a big run in them? Plenty of time, 15 minutes to go. Every time it looks like the Orange are about to blow them out, there's a big turnover, and Arkansas hits a shot to get a little bit closer. Foul of 15.06 to go. Arkansas only two out of 13 from the three-point line right now in this ball game. Clark with a second foul for the Razorbacks. So Trish to put it in. Tipped, and Young has it. They've got a four on two. Wagner bouncing here. Williams, good hesitation. And he got it to go. He'll go to the line. The foul and one. That is number four on Sutherland. It's a major development for Syracuse. Absolutely it is. Boy, a terrific job by Wagner using the free throw line on his end as a yield sign. Not a stop sign, a yield sign. What's the traffic telling you to do? This is the yield sign right there. It doesn't mean stop. It means read the defense and make sure you take what it gives you. That is a great job of Wagner understanding the use of the free throw line in transition. Pause, read the traffic, merge with the traffic, and do what the traffic is telling you to do with the basketball. ESPN is hosting the Jimmy V Classic on Tuesday starting at 7. The Longhorns take on the Hoyas. Then at 9 o'clock, number 18, NC State will square off against Connecticut. The Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona Extra. As some you'll see on the wooden award watch list, Otto Porter, C.J. Leslie, who can just explode, Lorenzo Brown as well. C.J. Leslie is, just in terms of pure talent and the ability to post drive people as good as anybody we have in college ball. Lorenzo Brown did not play well on the road against Michigan. Appling did not play well on the road for Tom Izzo at Miami the other night. Aaron Kraft did not play well on the road at Duke. How do I judge a point guard? How well they play in a true road game. And my eyes are on Michael Carter-Williams right now in his first true road game of the year, and he's done well. Ja'Cory Williams, a freshman at the line, trying to complete a three-point play here. What killed Kentucky last night? Point guard play on the road. Didn't have one. Don't have one right now. An 8 nothing run on a fortunate free throw to make it 57-50. Sutherland in trouble and fouls with four. I would get a shot on the box right now if I'm Syracuse. Foul here with 14.48 to go. As Carter Williams wants to make a move on the baseline, Young holding him up. And he commits the foul. That'll be number two on B.J. Young. Trish gets that one cleanly to the backcourt. They have Arkansas playing hard. They're, they're, they're playing extremely hard, but fouling negates effort. Arkansas can allow Syracuse to score a lot of points from the free throw stripe if they have a comeback in them. Trish. In, no. 
Syracuse's best scorer tonight with 28 points is on the bench. Sutherland has had an incredible shooting game, but saddled with four personals. You would think they would turn to Trish, who came in averaging 15. Now look at Arkansas's lineup. B.J. Young, the only real scoring threat on the floor for Arkansas. Can they get him the ball in a scoring spot? They get it to Williams. Well short. Rebound comes to Young. Never touched the rim. Five on the clock. Young inside for two. Just had to go get his own. And he did. Trying to answer Carter Williams. That glances away. Very quick shot. But a foul here. A whistle with 13.48 to go will go against Arkansas. And look at, I'm sorry, look at Jim Beheim's demeanor right now. I mean, a lot of coaches would be throwing their coat, kicking chairs because of the poor shot selection of his point guard on the road. What does he do? Stands up, gets his attention, calm demeanor, trying to stay calm in chaos. If your head coach can't do it, your players can't do it. Ricky Scott with a foul. Syracuse has it. Fair trying to dribble through heavy traffic lost it. Now a tie up on the play and a possession arrow will keep it on this end. So it'll be Syracuse ball 1335 to go. Fifty seven fifty two. We take a look at our ultimate drive of the game brought to you by BMW. B.J. Young is always in attack mode and great recognition to know the shot clock was winding down. And just a little bit, boom, of an eye fake and a shoulder fake. A great quickness to whip his defender. Down to the bench, but that probably will not be for very long. 23 points. Syracuse has missed their last four shots. Arkansas has tightened up defensively. And, and they're going to have to be really tight defensively with B.J. Young on the floor because they have no scores on the floor. Banked in by Musakita, a 6'10 junior. Off the window. That settles down the crowd a little bit. 59-52. Boy, a critical time for Arkansas to stay in this ball game with B.J. Young on the bench. Now another quick shot by Arkansas and a miss by Wagner. Carter Williams. Trish is open. Had missed everything. Madden on a handoff. They swing it up for Wagner. Now Scott. Scott will loft it from the corner. Big rebound by Coleman. He's fouled over the back with 12.38 left. Today, Ricky Scott is one for three from the three-point line coming in. And he took a challenge shot from that corner. And that's Arkansas's dilemma right now. you got to get some rest for B.J. Young. But when you do, you have no offense. Now, Marshawn Powell checking back in certainly helps Mike Anderson's cause. So it'll be Coleman, the big freshman from upstate New York, to go to the line. Came into tonight's contest having made just six out of 13. And this has been a hard game for him to play in because of the speed and quickness that Arkansas throws. And he will demand some double teams this year in the Big East as a first-year player. Trish to penetrate. Difficult shot rolls off the rim. And it'll go the other way. Arkansas has it with 12.29 to go. I expect Mike Anderson to try to get to the next TV timeout with B.J. Young on the bench and then come back in. So he's buying time for B.J. Anderson around the next TV timeout. Doubling his rest time by doing it. It's a good pass. Another one. Inside for Powell. Boy, they moved it beautifully on the interior. Well done. Back-to-back -back low passes under the arms of that tall Syracuse zone. Fair from the corner. No. Williams out of the pack nearly turned it over. What did the traffic tell him to do? At the yield sign, the traffic told him to stop. Right decision. Young on the bench. Sutherland on the bench. At least right now, 11 and a half minutes to go. Madden driving with 10 on the shot clock. Poke from behind, stolen by Trish. 
And here he comes all the way to the iron to lay it in. Boy, great craftiness by Brandon Trish. You leave that ball behind you against the length of that zone up top, it will be the other direction in a hurry. Spin move, Powell up and in for two, and a fast strike by the Razorbacks. 61-56. And now Mike Anderson has B.J. Powell set to check in. The next dead ball will be the TV timeout. So he has accomplished what he wanted to do. Here's Trish straight on. Yes, all net. Boy, he's made a couple of big plays. Boy, how competitive was he when the ball went through the net. Another dish underneath Powell. Likes that spin move. Up, no. 64-56. Some breathing room here for Syracuse. But as we mentioned at the top of the show, what Mike Anderson preaches to his team is win the last 10 minutes of the game. Here's Trish. Yes, again. Another triple for Brandon Trish. And a timeout, Arkansas. And Mike Anderson couldn't wait for the natural break for the TV timeout to happen. And Arkansas will go back and look at this film, and Mike Anderson right now talking to his guy specifically about their inability to tag shooters. It was Sutherland, and now it's Trish. You get loose with the ball, it will be a rip and run to the other end. Again, catching with space and pace, and Syracuse making Arkansas pay for it every single time in this game so far. Trish with a flurry, scoring the last eight points for the Orange, and they've opened up a 67-56 lead. This is the team about to leave the Big East. A dawning member in 1979, a very young Jim Beheim there. The Georgetown Games stuff of legend. Ten times winning the regular season championship, five times the tournament championship, and the game of games, of course, six overtimes. That's a drowsy Jay Billis right in the middle of yeah, that was, shot. Yeah, I've got the sixth or seventh overtime. What a great conversation with Jim Beheim. You could, you could kind of hear the, the brokenness in his voice when he talked about what's happening to the, all he's ever known the Big East. It is not at all what it was in his tenure. I think more than a little sadness there. Seems like Jim is intent on shepherding them into the ACC. But uh, that might be a decision for another day. The bounce for Powell. The kick here for Scott. Can't bury the jumper. A fight for the rebound. Stripped. Trish comes away with it. Trish has the hot hand. And that continues. He has taken over the game. Hot hands and strong hands because... It was a 50-50 ball that Trish just got his paws on and wouldn't let go. Clark with an answer from three-point land. Syracuse just can't put Arkansas away. Not yet, anyway. So, indeed, Trish has been the answer with Sutherland on the bench. The teardrop around and in by Carter Williams. You know, he's not the quickest guy. But his first step, he, he covers ground with his first step extremely well. Powell working very hard. Here's Clark. Wagner's open for a long one, and he swished it in, a three-pointer. A good job by Clark to turn down a covered-up shot to get a wide-open shot. Sutherland at the scorer's table to come back in. But the way Trish has been shooting, you're shooting the lights out. Here he is again. Wagner into the lane, gave it up for Clark, and he was tripped and fouled on the play with 8.41 to go. Fourth foul by Carter Williams. Now Brandon Trish, 10 of the last 12 Syracuse points have come from him, 17 in the game. I, I think great players fix things right now. But the problem was Sutherland with foul trouble is the problem. Trish is the answer. Hey, Robich, this has been an offensive show. 8.41 left here in Fayetteville. Arkansas has been as close as two points in the second half. And they only led briefly in the first half when it was very early. Clark at the line. So Cody Clark, Jr. out of Birmingham, Alabama. He has been their leading rebounder in the first five games of the season for the Razorbacks. 
and, and leader in terms of free throw attempts, and he's doing it off the bench. Meanwhile, Nolan Richardson looking on. The head coach won the 1994 National Championship here. 390 wins in his career. And he, is why, well, he is why Mike Anderson is now on that sidelines. That's his mentor. Trying to play a similar style. Of course, that Arkansas team had a lot of great players. Online turned over by the Razorback. Razorbacks have it. Five on three as well. You've got to convert on this one. Young to Clark. Has some of the lane. And throw it right to Christmas. And he zips the pass down the other end and able to knock it back into play, but right to the Razorbacks, and they have numbers. That's five on four. Carter Williams getting back into the fray. Wild pass again, nearly stolen away by the Orange. What a terrific effort by Syracuse to defend a five on three and then defend a five on four. The corner jumper not there, and the rebound comes out high to Carter Williams. Syracuse in possession, fair down the lane. They left him go all the way through. That is just too easy. Wagner trying to push the same tempo. Seven and a half left here, 10 point game. You mentioned it, Jimmy. Syracuse has not been able to shake Arkansas. They've been in striking distance most of the night. Powell, strong move. He got it. Marshawn Powell's had a good second half, very active with 13. Fair quickly on the attack and an offensive foul. That'll go against C.J. Fair. Now C.J. Fair had nowhere to go. Taking the ball in traffic, doesn't read what, what's going on with the defense. Here's the effort though I'm talking about. Bam, up into row eight and then immediately back into the play. To win the Capital One Cup and be the best in men's and women's college sports, you got to lay it all on the line. Every play, every game, in every sport. Teams are battling it out for NCAA Division One. Started a unique tradition called Senior Walk. From the 1870s to today, all graduates have their name carved into the sidewalk throughout the campus. Look who we found in 1985, the graduating class of 1985, my partner, your friend, you know him, you love him, one Jimmy Dykes. Wow, look at that right there, huh? I, I don't have this confirmed yet. I got my people working on it. We think that might be one of the 10 most historical spots in the entire state of Arkansas. <laughs> a, a lot of people design their vacation around coming Just to this to see, campus to see that spot. I'm not, the Jimmy Dykes, I don't have that as a yeah, fact yet, but I that's what I've been told. You are that popular. I can, <laughs> no, absolutely, <laughs> uh, I can absolutely see that. Syracuse has been trying to put Arkansas away all night long, unable to do it. Now the Razorbacks have the ball back. Now they're looking for a really hot hand. It has been B.J. Young as Wagner tries to get inside. I, I still think you've got to try to get that ball to the logo and face up and make a play. Powell's the guy that can do it. There's the catch. Powell put it down, draws the foul with 6.46 to go. Syracuse will adjust their defense as the game goes on. Initially, they'll see what you're going to do when you get the ball to that spot on the floor. And as this game has gone on, they have slowly crept the middle guy in that zone closer and closer to the playmaking ability of Powell. Well, Trish has picked up his fourth foul, so he's going to have to leave. And Trevor Cooney, the freshman from Wilmington, Delaware, who redshirted last year, comes on for Jim Beheim. You know, and I project Syracuse. I, I think they're one of the top, you know, 10, 12 teams in the country right now, the, the, the way they've been playing. But their depth in the backcourt is certainly a concern. They have three guards. They really only have one point guard, and that's Michael Carter-Williams. But you know what? Kentucky cut down the nets last year with one point guard. You can do it. It can be done. Well, for Bayheim, his top three scorers all have four fouls. And a lot of time left. 73-67. What Syracuse can do, Dave, is turn the ball over and allow Arkansas to get a 4 or 6-0 run going and this building explode again. Pass tip. Got to Cooney. He's going to drive it and stripped and fouled on the play. That was with 14 
on the shot clock. You have fouled a guy that all he does is, is make three-point shots. That's all Cooney does is jack up threes. And that was a non-rim threat drive. He was not going towards the rim. No reason to foul Cooney at the end of the play. Wade fouled him. Cooney, a guy who was stuck behind Scoop Jardine and Brandon Trish and Deion Waiters last year, so a wise choice to redshirt. But misses the first free throw. You know what they need uh, Trevor Cooney to be this year? He needs to be the Brady Heslop from Baylor for Syracuse. The guy that is absolutely a knockdown shooter when he's in the ball game. He makes one of two. Two hottest hands for the Orange have been on the bench now for a little while. All of Sutherland's back in the ball game. That one tipped. It's like going against a press the entire ball game, talking about going against Syracuse 2-3 zone because they shoot the gaps, they lull you to sleep, and then flash through a pass. You must stay alert for 40 minutes. Wade thought about it, gives it up for Powell. Shot clock down to five. Long one by Wade, no. Battle for the rebound, no whistle there, and Syracuse comes out of the pack with it. Arkansas in dire need of a stop. Rebound batted free. SU with another chance. Carter Williams floats it up there for two. That is his shot. Boy, he is he is so good with his length inside. First of all, he's 6'6, six, six, but do you see where the release point is for him? Awfully high. Nifty pass, but a foul in the lane with 524 to go as Wade hit the deck. I watched Michael Carter Williams prior to his senior year at the Peach Jam going head-to-head -head with Austin Rivers, and he was a much better player. Look at the high. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Look how high the release point is for Michael Carter-Williams. 6'6", and doesn't shoot it till the ball gets at the top of the extension. Unblockable for a point guard at that point. Wade with another one coming here with 524 on the clock. Powell will step out from Mike Anderson. And he'll bring on Cody Clark, 6'7", junior. Remember stepping in the gym that afternoon, watching that AU game, and, and the all, all eyes were on Austin Rivers. And I kept watching this kid make play after play after play. And finally they said, well, he's going to Syracuse. And I said, watch out. Carter Williams with it here. Wagner trying to guard him. Fair spins underneath and travels with it. So again, that door opens a little bit more for Arkansas. And, and, and Jim Beheim knows it. He knows he's had opportunities to push this thing out to a 10, 11, 12 point lead and they have not capitalized. And Arkansas is a shot away from being right smack dab in the middle of this game and they can't get one to drop. Clark. And they, cannot, they can't get a second shot yeah, for sure. That's right, and a quick shot there by Clark as he misfired and the basket and one, a great drive by Carter Williams. When that lane opens up, he just attacks it. He's, he is really good. He rebounds it, he gets fouled, he slithers. And for a 6'6 kid, he understands how to get his waist lower than the guy he's guarding. And he's been guarded by some 5'11", six-footers in this game, and he still gets lower than them. Well done. Wade's fourth foul. Look at his assists and turnovers. I mean, he came in to tonight with 37 assists in the first four games. Remarkable, he gets one assist every three and a half minutes that he's on the floor. The nation's best. Williams, no. Second effort, Clark, yes! Oh, it almost went. He'll go to the line for two shots. He wanted that three-point play desperately, 79-68. Musakita with the foul to put Clark to the line. And this kid has made his free throws all season long. 88% free throw shooter, 22 out of 25 coming in. And drops in the first. They've watched his release point. Remember in the first half, B.J. Young got the ball beside his ear? This kid never gets the ball at that spot. So as a result, that shot arm is going up instead of out. 26 out of 33 for Arkansas. Cody drives it hard, That's lays it up. Offensive foul on Cooney. Was he in the restricted arc? 
Well, he was awfully close to being in on or above it, talking about the Arkansas defender. And Jim Beheim was pointing at it himself. He brings Cooney out, the freshman to the bench, four and a half to go. Arkansas forcing 18 turnovers a game. They have Syracuse at 16. That was the wrong play by Cooney. Time, score, and momentum dictates the shot. See if Young can get heated up again. They need him desperately. Williams back to Wagner to penetrate. Yeah, Young has to want the ball. He's guarding himself in that top corner right now. Pass slithered in for Clark. Williams shot clock down to three. That missed badly. B.J. Young never got a touch of the basketball on that possession. And he should have been option one, two, and three. Especially down nine. Absolutely. Young has 23. Sutherland has 28. Sutherland. Yes, another triple. Pure. He is pure. 31 for him. Count the basket. 3.29 to go. That's going to be an offensive foul. Offensive foul on that end. And Sutherland deep in the corner once again. He is now tied his Syracuse record with nine three-pointers made. Hey, look. Shooting star. Make a wish. I wish we could buy here forever. I wish this test drive was over. So we could head back to the dealership. SEC Big East Challenge. Jimmy Dykes, Dave O'Brien with you here from Fayetteville. The Orange with the ball leading by 12. Carter Williams dancing in. No, not that time. Does Arkansas have a 14 to 1 run in them? to finish this game, because that's about what it's going to take. Well, they get the quick strike as they go back inside for Marshawn Powell. Give him 17. Ten-point game again. And James Sutherland just bounced the ball five times, and he throws it away. First time he's had to bounce the ball the entire ball game. Young, Young has to be a hungry scorer right now for Arkansas. He really hasn't been the last several minutes. Nice fake there by Clark. Here's the shot by Wagner, a long one. That did not touch anything. He's had some ugly shots here. Freshman out of Alexandria, Louisiana, has been off target. So 82-72. And now it's really hard to bother the size of Syracuse, Michael Carter, Williams, and Trish. You can't get into the length of this kid with the ball, and you can't get into the big backside that Trish can put on you. Carter Williams all the way through. Beautifully done off the window. I'm telling you, he is really good. He is really good. If he had a jump shot, he might be a lottery pick in the next draft. Young shreds them on the other end, but time is of the essence now. He has 25. But they cannot afford to trade baskets. Syracuse can run clock here. Yeah, you got a foul. I mean, you, you don't have any other option. Reaching by Clark, he got it. He takes it away, draws the foul, and lays it in. How about that play? Big lift from Cody Clark. He got the pick, the basket, and the foul, and he has a chance at a three-point play. Mike Anderson was, was, was signaling his guys to come up and get contact, and Michael Carter-Williams makes a huge mistake, turns his head to the defense, relaxes at the wrong time, one of the few mistakes the number one in orange has made the entire game. Clark three out of four at the line tonight. Time starting to run out though on the Razorbacks with a minute 39 to go. A three point play, however. 84 77, they're still in it. Arkansas will be in swarm attack mode right now. Keep the ball in the hands of this kid. You're in good shape, I think. It's a good foul shooter, too. Sutherland, a dribble down. Yes! What a night he's had. 33 points for James Sutherland. Came in averaging 15 a game. He will leave here thinking the basket size in the SEC is bigger than what they play with in the Big East. Young with a miss. That's how he'll think. And a foul by Arkansas. Stopped the clock with a minute five to go. 
Well, they are certainly going to remember his name here in Fayetteville. Help us beat cancer. The V Foundation awarding 100% of direct donations and net proceeds to fund cancer research. Log on to www.jimmyv.org or call 1 800 4 Jimmy V. You can do that right now to donate. Great, great games on the air during Jimmy V week. No game is going to be more impactful and more important than donating to that cause right there. Carter Williams to the line. Working on 16 points and in and out on the first one. This, of course, is a, a very, very tender topic for that man, Mike Anderson, the head coach for Arkansas. He lost both of his parents to cancer. And he told us a story about when he finally made it as a head coach and he went to UAB and had some success. He said going home, he was in his early 40s. His mom was so thrilled for him. She was beside herself with pride that her son had done so well and been a success in his field. And she was gone just months later. Mm. It was stomach cancer and a three-pointer there. Timeout, 46.6 seconds. It's a seven-point game. They're not done yet. ESPN College Basketball is available live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at WatchESPN.com and with the Watch ESPN app. And you can watch James Sutherland do this on that app. And what is it? It is catch and shoot. Rise and fire, and he's done it at a rapid pace. And he has done this from the time he checked in to the time the final horn is going to go off. Uh, James Sutherland has been in complete control of his game. And Arkansas has not made him do anything other than catch and shoot. Has not bounced the ball into a shot one time. And there's number nine. Bam. And that tied a Syracuse record for three-pointers made in a game. You know, those names are Routens, McNamara, and Sutherland now for Syracuse. Trish giving it up for Carter Williams, who's played such a heady floor game. File here with 37.6 seconds to go. Syracuse leading by seven. Hey, what? That's a good job by Arkansas to quickly recover at the rim and put a 50% free throw shooter on the stripe. By Musakita. In and out on the first one. Mike Anderson trying to get back to the glory days for Arkansas. Has a very good recruiting class coming in next year. And he said, look, we have the blueprint. It's happened here before. Yep. He's got some size coming in is what he has. A three possession game. Arkansas has got to go quick. Syracuse doesn't want to foul. You can drive this thing and extend it or let B.J. launch. Young with a miss. Rebound tipped. Battle on the baseline. Powell is there and he drew the foul. He will go to the line with 25.5 to go. Foul on by Musakita. Powell's a 71% foul shooter. They've watched Syracuse play in this building. I know Louisville's going to be a handful in that league this year. Notre Dame's going to be terrific as well. I think I think Cincinnati's a club you have to really keep an eye on, but. I think defensively, Syracuse could really grow into one of the better defensive clubs that Jim's had because of the length of their guards up top make it so difficult to attack. A win tonight for Jim Beheim will be number 895. That would put him at seven victories away from tying Bob Knight for number two all time. Arkansas pressing. The point guard shovels it ahead. It's Sutherland for the dunk. Wow, what a night. 35. Had, had no chance unless you fouled. And Arkansas gave up one at the rim. Career night for James Sutherland. They will long remember that name here in Fayetteville. Young tips it to himself, battling hard underneath. And tipped away. It'll go in the other direction. Syracuse ball with 3.7 seconds. So the Orange are going to go out to 5-0 and on the season. Arkansas will drop to three and three. And the number six team in the country got their first test so far this season. Another whistle at 2.6 to go, so not quite over yet. But Jim Beheim closing in 
on 900 wins, and that could come on ESPNU. We've highlighted that game against Detroit. That's if Bayheim wins the next five. That next game against Eastern Michigan, the only team in the country that plays percentage-wise more zone than Syracuse is Eastern Michigan. Reason why, Rob Murphy, the head coach, former Syracuse assistant under Jim Bayheim, so they will be squaring off. I know this, if nothing else, James Sutherland has established himself tonight as the front runner for the national sixth man of the year. I don't think it's within, without any question right now. That's the position he has put himself in in this ball game. Deion, Deion Waiters was Big East sixth man of the year. Chris Joseph was sixth man of the year a couple of years ago, but I'm talking national sixth man of the year. This kid leads that conversation at the end of November. Bell with the heave in midcourt does not go, so that's the final score as Syracuse wins a slugfest tonight. 91-82 on the road at Arkansas. The Big East has now opened up a 5-2 lead in the SEC Big East Challenge with seven wins needed to clinch it. 91-82 the final. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm on it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're covered, Kevin. Thanks, Melinda. Uh, wait, uh... I have blah blah insurance, so person, come help. Hey, Grandma. Dad, look who it is. I see who it is. Six callers ahead of us, Jimmy. You're not helping. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. There to help you anytime, anywhere, any way. That's getting to a better state. Meet the five passenger Ford C Max hybrid. When you're carrying a lot of weight, C Max has a nice little trait. Hey. You see, C-Max helps you load your freight with its foot-activated lift gate. But that's not all you'll see, because C-Max also beats Prius V with better MPG. Say hi to the all-new 47 combined MPG C-Max Hybrid.